What we'll do now is we'll program a job that's a, just a simple little job. Let me get the blueprint. And what we're looking at here is just a job with four holes, just a plate, four holes, and we're on the two axis side of the control. The bottom left corner here is our zero point. So we'll go in and program this right now. What we'll do is press program. So we just want to keep our eyes focused right here in the conversation strip. And currently the question is, what's the program name? We can use the alphabet and numbers. So let's call it job one, two, three. Then I'm going to put LK for Lindy Kuntz. So I type in one, two, three. And now I want the alphabet. There's the blue question mark I'd mentioned earlier. So when we press the help key now, it'll bring up the alphabet. So what I want to do is move the blue cursor over here to L. So just use the left arrow, get it on there and press enter. So my job number is one, two, three, L. Now I need to go over one more, put in the K. There we are, one, two, three, LK. So we've got the program name that we want. We press N to end the alphabet. So it loaded in our program name, 123LK. Next question, scaling, one inch. Scaling is where you can make your parts bigger or smaller than the original size. Mold builders love this, uh, especially if they got to allow for a shrink factor of, say, 4%. They don't have to go in and refigure all their dimensions and add 4% to them. They can just put dimensions in and then scale at 1.04. It would make all the parts, uh, the dimensions, 4% bigger. But for our job, one inch is equal one inch. So we just load that in through the abset key. Auxiliary function requests, that's where you can have it talk to a fourth axis indexing head, uh, not a true fourth axis interpolation, but an indexing head. And also you can turn coolant on and off and air clamps on and off. And I don't remember if this machine's got the auxiliary function. That is an option that's available if they're not in there. But it's asking, do we want any? And I do not. So it's offering me the word no. I'm just going to press abset and load that in. Event comments is where you can type yourself in a reminder message. If you want to remind yourself to check a dimension or check a cutter, you can say, yes, add event comments. It'll add that line into each event then. What is your comment? And you can type in whatever you wish. And as you're running the job, it'll come up right here on the screen as a little reminder for yourself. Multiple fixtures, that's good for, let's say you're going to run three vices on the machine all at the same time. And you say you got your zero point set in the left vice. Well, it's hard to program the center and the right vice if the zero is clear down in the left vice. So multiple fixtures allows you to have new zero points in each vice or each fixture. So this question is, do we have multiple fixtures? For this job, no, we don't. If we had the three vices on there to run a job, we'd say yes, and then it'll ask us how far apart the vices are, or the fixtures are, and then uh, which was number one, number two, and number three. So it's like a zero shift is what it is. So for this job, multiple fixtures, no. I'm not gonna have that. I just load it in through the abset key. Dimension definition. The prototrack has gotten to be very, very popular because it is what's called a part geometry based control, which simply means you tell it the shape of the part, it will automatically figure the tool path, which is very different than most other CNC's. Most other CNC's are what they call G-code controls. You have to figure the cutter path itself, which is not too bad if you're going in a straight line or just drilling holes, but it's really difficult if you're doing an angle or going into arcs, and that's why CAD CAM got to be really popular. But most machinists on the floor don't want to have to go learn to be CAD CAM people either. So the Prototrack does all the thinking for you. Uh, there is a button here called Toolpath. The one limitation that a part geometry based control has is when you're getting into a full three axis move and uh, it automatically assumes you're using a ball nosed end mill. And uh, let me grab a, let's say that this, this piece of paper right here was actually a part and my finger was a ball-nosed end mill. We're gonna mill up this edge. It's looking at the tangent point that the cutter is contacting the part. So when you're making just one three-axis move like that, everybody's happy. But what happens is if you go into another one, if you come up to this one and then you wanna go down this edge here because the ending point for this one is not the beginning point for that one because it's looking for the tangent point that is contacting the ball-nosed end mill. 
So that's a limitation we have. We can't hook three moves together like, or excuse me, two moves that are full three axis together like that. So we got a button here called Tool Pass. If you press that, it turns off all the geometry based stuff and you will be programming the center line of the cutter. So you can do those full three axis moves where you got to hook them into one another like that. But for 99.9% .9 of all the jobs, part geometry is just fine. So it's offered me part geometry. I'm going to go ahead and load that in through the set key. And what you'll see now, it says select appropriate go to. We got three of them here. Go to the beginning. That's what we need to start a new program. We go to the end. If we had a program in there, we wanted to add some more to it. Or we would go to uh, event number if you want to go in and make a modification to an existing program. So let's go to the beginning. Press this key right here. It says select an event. Now remember, we're on the two axis side of the control. So on the two axis side, select event. Here we got position, drill, bolt hole, mill, that's any straight line, arc, pocket, profile. The difference between these two, pocket will remove all the material out of the center of the shape. Profile does not, it leaves it in there. So profile would be good for, let's say you had a plate you wanted to um, drop a six inch diameter round slug out of the center of the plate. Well, you do a profile. It just go around that six inch diameter one time and the slug would fall out of the plate. That would be a profile. We do have a basic engraving package. It's capital letters on a flat surface only. Now we got a few more to work with. We can't get them all on this screen. We got a button called more. And we press more, it'll change the headings here. We got copy and subroutine. So let's go back. We're going to do this job right here. It's just four holes on a flat plate of material. And our zero point is the bottom left corner right here. And what they show in this paper, these are absolute dimensions, which is what I'm going to use. These are incremental dimensions up here. So we're going to use the absolute dimensions. I'm going to go back, select an event. I need to do a position drill. Here's a list of questions it's going to ask us, but here's the question we're working on. What is your X ending point? You'll see from the left edge, which is zero, over to the hole is one inch. So we just type in one, press abset. Y ending from the bottom edge up to there is an inch and a half. Now the other thing you need to know is which way is plus and minus. <clears throat> and as you program, you'll find it's 100 times easier if you imagine that the tool is moving on the part and not the table, even though the table is what moves. Because on your x-axis, if my finger is the tool, when your tool goes to the right, that's a positive. When your tool goes to the left, that's a negative. On the y-axis, when the tool goes away from you, that's a positive move. When it comes towards you, it's a negative move. And in a moment, we'll get over on the three axis side and then we'll be programming Z. When the tool goes up, that's positive. When it goes down, that's a negative direction, okay? So on this job here, on the Y ending, this is my zero, this edge. When we go from there up to that hole, it's an inch and a half in the positive direction. So we just type in 1.5. You do not have to tell it it's positive. It will assume all numbers are positive. You just have to tell it when it's a negative. So I just type in 1.5 abset. Tool number, it's offering me tool one. That's what I'm going to use. When I load this last piece of information in, you'll see it'll take this event and it'll move it over on this side of the screen just so you can look at it and reference off of it if you wanted to. So that is one event for that hole there. Now we're going to do another position event for this hole right here. Another position drill. This time X is two inches from the zero point, two inches absolute. Y stays at 1.5, which is where it was before. We're going to use the same tool. That one's finished. Now we're going to do the third hole, another position drill. This time X is three inches over. So we we'll type in three inches, Y 1.5, tool number one. We got one more hole. It's at X at four inches, position drill, X four, Y 1.5 and tool one. We're all finished. We can press our look key anytime we want after we finish an event or like I've waited to the end of the program. Press look. You'll see the graphics show the bottom left corner, the zero point for your X and Y. There's four yellow dots right there that represent the holes. 
so the graphics look pretty good for this job. The second thing we'll want to do is we will want to go to the machine and set up our zero point on the actual part. We're going to do that with the digital readout. So we press mode to get back out front. We go into digital readout. And now we're going to use an edge finder and go over and pick up the edges. Okay, what we're going to do now is pick up the zero point on the X and Y axis. So I'm in digital readout. I've changed and put an edge finder in here. The first thing I need to do is bring the head down because we're up too high. So I'm going to go into jog because we're still in digital readout. Press jog. And I want to move my Z negative. So I need to press a negative button right here. We got negative, so when I press Z, the head will wrap it down until I let go of the button, which I'm gonna let go right there. It's real important after you get finished jogging, you press return and get out of there. All right, so now I'm gonna jog the X axis over. I should have left it in there for another moment. I need to go negative on X. Come over here. We're gonna go negative on Y. That's good right there. Now we're gonna get out of jog again. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is turn the spindle on, and I'm gonna come over here and touch this edge. This is a 200 thousandths diameter edge finder. We got the edge finder on, pull the manual quill down. We're gonna come over. Down just a touch too far, there we go. We're bringing it over. Now my hand wheel is in course. No, it's in fine. We're going to leave it alone then. All right, we're in fine. We're going to move it over very slowly to the edge finder. It looks real straight. And then you'll see it'll kick out sideways right there. So what we do is raise up. Right now we say X, you're at zero. We press X, abset. So X is sitting at zero, but we're really half the edge finder off. It's a 200 thousandths edge finder, so I need to move over 100 thousandths so that I get into the center of the spindle. So right there's 100 thousandths, and we re-zero again. So now the edge is directly in the center of the spindle. Now we'll go do the same thing on the y-axis. There it kicked out, and here's a little shortcut. You can just say why you're sitting at negative 0.1. And that would put the center line on zero. So we've picked up the X and Y zero point. Now what we're gonna do is turn the spindle off and put our drill in and actually run that little job. I'm gonna go ahead and raise that head back up, press jog. The nice thing, when you go into jog, it automatically defaults to positive. So as soon as you hit jog, you can hit Z, and you know the head will always go up. That's good enough. Now I'm going to get out of jog, change my tool. Okay, we got our drill and a chuck. If you want it really tight, use all three holes on the chuck to get it very, very tight in there. Okay, we're ready to run the job. To run the job, all we do is press mode, press run, it's offered me three ways to get started. If I press start, it'll begin at the beginning of the program. Start event number lets you start anywhere in the middle. Trial run will just do a real quick little run through it, which let's do a trial run so you can see that. Press trial run, and now when I press go, you'll notice it'll go through the moves really quick just so you can see them. There's one, two, three, four holes, it's done. Okay, so the trial run looks good. Now we'll press start and we'll press go. It says load in tool number one, which is zero diameter. Now what's happened here is I've skipped a step because I'm on the two axis side, you can get away with this. And that is I did not go in and tell it how big the tool were. 
because this particular job, the tools are running on center line, so I can get away with not telling it a tool diameter. It tells me start spindle, press go for CNC run. So I start the spindle, press go, and you'll see it says set Z. So that means drill your hole. So we're going to come down, drill that hole, and it'll just stay there and not move until you press go again. Press go, drill that hole. Now you can press the go button or you have this here is called the remote stop go. This button takes the place of these two buttons. So you can put this in your left hand and keep the quill handle in your right hand. Click it, drill, click it, drill, click it one more time and it'll say the run is over. Now here's something very cool. We're on the two axis side of the control. If those holes were actually quarter 20 drilled and tapped, you would need three tools, a center drill, tap drill, and a tap. But on the two axis side, like we are right now, you could use, use this one little program and do all three tools. So let's say I just went through there with my center drill, then I could go back through the same program using my tap drill, then I could put a quarter 20 tap in the chuck, put it down on the low side of the RPMs and come down and power tap it, back it out, click it, go, do it again. So that's a really neat thing. Let's say we just center drilled, we just run back through the program again, and we would drill that hole, drill that hole, drill that hole, drill that hole. Then we put our tap in, press start, run right back through the same program again, because on the two axis side of the control, you can get away with using various different tools all in as tool number one. Can't do that over on the three axis side, but the two axis side is so friendly and easy and quick. So we have our quarter 20 tap in there, let's say, we come down and power tap the hole, press go, power tap that one, press go, and then you got the job completely finished. 